Cleaning Nation. It is time to have some fun, to soak up some wisdom, and get everything that you need to grow your company. If you love the show, if your life is better as a member of Cleaning Shape Nation, show us the love. Give us a five-star re- uh, review on iTunes. Go to the website, growbycleaningcompany.com. There are all, all sorts of tools, both paid and free, that will help you grow the cleaning company that you've always wanted. Today, we have a very special guest all the way from Germany. His name is, <laughs> I'm going to butcher his name, but here we go, Neboisha Soinich. Neboisha is based in Duesenberg, Germany, and started his company, Geboi de Rai Nengun, less than a year ago. Neboisha provides commercial and residential cleaning services. Neboisha, welcome to the show, my friend. Uh, hello, and uh, hi, to, hi to the all. So I'm very glad I'm be there. Glad to have you, my friend. Now, first of all, before I, I'm sure I embarrassed myself, did, did I do okay in the business and personal name? Here's your chance to correct me if I absolutely butchered it. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I, I have actually uh, the background from Serbia, so that's my name coming from, and my company name coming from the German language. So, and uh, yeah, you did pronounce both of the things very good, so I can say that you are now trilingual. <laughs> and I want to clean the nation. I want to tell you before we started recording, uh, this guy is companies in Germany and he learned German. He learned English, but he's from, I believe, Croatia. So he's got three or four languages going on there. And I want to ask you, of course, we're doing this uh, via Skype as, as much as we love you guys. Our budget does not allow for me to fly out to Germany uh, to even as good of a guess as the Boisha is. So forgive us in advance. I don't, you could, you know, the, if there's any angry emails coming about the sound quality being poor, I apologize. This is the best that we could do from where we're at. But I'm pretty excited that we've got someone on all the way from Germany. That said, uh, Nabosha, tell us a little bit how you ended up in Germany, how you ended up speaking German and English and your native language, and what drew you to the cleaning business? Well, uh, basically, I did, uh, after my college, uh, I did work uh, a lot of time in IT industry and uh, something that is related with uh, mathematics and algorithms and stuff like that. Um, actually, I was doing that for quite quite a lot of time for for ten years and more. And um, then, uh, in one uh, uh, in one point of time, I decide to relocate myself with a family in Germany uh, because uh, mostly because of better education, uh, better health system, and that 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 was that was something that. I want uh, I want to do uh, for my kids and um, yeah why uh, why I how I end up in a cleaning business is basically when I came in here I didn't speak a word of a language um, the people on the street are not responding to English or any kind of other languages except the German. So I was in a, in a position that I cannot uh, do basically anything else uh, except uh, start some uh, manual work or manual labor. And uh, then I decide to work and learn at the same time. And I uh, start to learn a language and, and uh, to start a company for a cleaning. And now uh, I'm, 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 I'm very good with both of them. And I'm very successful, and I, I will say to you, I will never work anything else in my life anymore. So I'm quite happy with what I have and what I have reached right now. Gosh, I love your story. So you showed up in Germany, not speaking a lick of German, but figuring, well, maybe that maybe I can get by just to start with English. And uh, the people in your town were having none of it. And you, it was either you speak German or you speak to your family, but that's about it. And you just decided, well, I know how to clean. And I don't need language for that. And that's what I'm going to start. And then you learn the language. And now you're able to kind of move from manual labor to business owner. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. See, you were the kind of people and, we uh, need over here in America. How did Germany get you? What, what, what do we need to do to get you over here, my friend? <laughs> I, will be, I will be more than happy. I, will be, I, I was actually two times in my life. I was, I was uh, going in. I was flying to the United States. And, and I was seeing America and uh, most of the, my clients, I'm actually having a guy from, uh, from Missouri and um, he's, uh, he's real American and all the time uh, we are using English in conversation because both of us are, are uh, learning a German language and it's, it's great, great fun. Uh, I can uh, actually 
when you uh, did see United States here in Germany, you are something uh, different, and you can always talk about uh, uh, the California, the Florida, the New York. What's what's look like? It's different than here in Europe. Really, it's different. And the people always ask me, "What did you see there? How how many days you were?" And I'm talking more. I'm more American ambassador <laughs> than I'm uh, <laughs> than I'm real cleaner because the people are really interesting in that. And second, uh, there is. A, uh, I'm sorry for for your audience. Uh, my my English is terrible. But when you when you hear the Germans when they are speaking English, then it's it's something it's something different. You really need you really need to uh, to, to 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 know a part of their language to understand their English. It is I, I cannot say that. it's quite a mess. Well, like I told you before, man, I speak English very well and just about no other land and a little tiny Spanish. So anytime someone's bilingual, trilingual, speaks four languages, um, that man, you're, you're a hero of mine. So that said, how can I contribute, man? What's going on in your life that I can give you some value to, uh, to take back to your company and make things even better? So um, basically when I, um, I'm, I'm, thinking, I'm thinking about the marketing and um, what, is, uh, what will be my um, marketing approach. So uh, there is no difference between uh, Europe and United States is, is we do not have uh, so much commercials here. Uh, is it good or bad? I don't know. Uh, but uh, right now I'm having a, a more than enough customer. When I said more than enough, I, I mean uh, I have uh, enough work to do. But I need a marketing for, 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 for two reasons. Uh, first reason is I would like to have all the customers at, at the one place. So at the one block. As I'm driving, sometimes uh, it's not too far, but uh, we have the uh, a, lo a lot of times the Germany is building all the times, and there have stops and and uh, traffic, uh, what, what whatever. Uh, sometimes I'm driving uh, more more than an hour to get a client, just to to be there for a couple of hours and get back. Uh, I would like to have all the customers at the one block, one place. I'm living in a town that have a uh, half million people. Uh, I'm sorry, that uh, have a uh, five hundred thousand people, and uh, there is two towns uh, very near me, like on a ten kilometers. I don't know how ma many miles is that, but it's not, it's okay. not too big. Uh, they 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 both have a uh, uh, five hundred thousand people. So, so in my area, living two comma two point million people. And uh, all of them um, are asking for a cleaning. And uh, the thing is, what I did see in a group, uh, and it, it is a great difference between Europe and America, is uh, the paying rate in the United States are much more higher than here in Europe. So, for instance, uh, I'm getting something like uh, 20 euros uh, for every hour that I'm working. And uh, I think that in America is is some sometimes much more much more better. I'm talking about residential cleaning. For commercial cleaning, I'm getting a, a couple of euros more for for an hour of cleaning. So let why me, I need? Well, let me encourage you. The first thing is a lot of people. Um, well, first of all, I, in the limited experience I've had with uh, working with overseas folks, and I've had some people in Europe. I've had some Australians, Canadians. Uh, I found that. Europe, if anything, tends to be a little uh, less saturated. So the stuff that we do here, and you, you'd mentioned it in terms of less advertisement for good or for bad. For you, it's good because um, stuff wears off, right? It's novel and it's a great idea and, and people go, oh, wow, that's and they respond to it. And then a year later, they've seen it kind of done a, a thousand times and it's it's not as you got to you kind of have to create or cultivate something different. So the good thing is there's some things that uh, we're probably doing over here that is now saturated that people aren't responding as well to. But over there, because there's less ads, they might still respond to. That said, I would encourage you that I I've not found in any first world countries, obviously, if you get to places where there's just no economy and there's no wealth and it's you know all uh, either upper class or lower class, that's different. But certainly for Germany, and I don't know what part you're in, but um, as long as it, I know Germany's clearly a you know kind of a first world country 
I have found that it's not so much that, you know, this place pays more, that place pays worse. It's the quality of the messaging that you're able to convey and the quality of the people that you're able to convey it to. So if you market to the right person with the right message, you'll get the right price. If you market to poor people or people that don't value what you do or understand the value that you bring, uh, the, pr- the price conversation comes into play. So I want to encourage you. And even if I'm wrong, it's not a healthy or helpful or effective attitude to say, well, the margins are just low here in this entire country. Um, so I can't, I can't make any money because that's, if, you, if that's your foundation, it's going to be hard to build on. I'll give you a quick example uh, I use for uh, commodities when people think, oh, well, my job's a commodity. Everyone, get, everyone gets paid the same. and I can't charge any more. Car washes. Um, I don't know about over in Germany, but here... You could get the basic car wash for $5. There's a fancy one for $7 and the super fancy one for $10 if you kind of want to walk through and uh, or drive through. Do you guys have those in Germany where you just drive through and you pay and the machines do the washing? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we have it. Typically considered to be a commodity. But here, and I don't know if it's made it over to Germany or not yet, they've got people that will detail your car. So it's like, well, sure, it's, you know, somewhere between $5 and $12 to drive your car through this, this, this building that's going to you know, wash it for you. But if you want us to do it by hand, well, that's 30 or $40. And if you want us to wax it, now that's $150. And if you want the interior done and the engine thing, and, and you, can, you can spend two or $300 on a detail, and that would be the people that go, oh, this is a commoditized business. Everybody is just looking for price and no one will spend. And you go, okay, well, that's, that's fine. Well, let's take it to the next level. There's a place, I believe, in Ireland that is doing hand custom-made uh, car washes for $140,000. And they only do three or four cars wow. a year, and they're very spectacular cars. But again, most people go, I can't get more than 5 or $10 for a car wash. And then someone came and charged two or $300 for a detail. And I'm sure there's a whole spectrum in between. I'm not in the car business or the car wash business, so I don't know. But at the top end, there's guys charging over $100,000 to detail your car. And they, they do it. I mean, I'm sure they do some phenomenal, crazy job. So I just want to encourage you that. Most people would say, well, that's crazy. The most you get for a car wash is maybe a hundred bucks. Good Lord. There's people getting 200 and 500 and a thousand and all the way up to a hundred thousand dollars. The same works with, with you and cleaning in Germany, here in the States, Canada, Australia. Uh, we, I think we're in like 60, 70 countries now. Uh, again, if you're a first world country, I promise you, it's not about price. It's about value. Um, the people that pay the end, oh, that hundred thousand dollar car wash I told you about, there's a waiting list. So it's not like, he, well, sure, anyone can ask for. Oh, no, there's a waiting list. He has more people trying to get him to do it than he's able to do because he only does X amount per year. And he's got a, a multi-year waiting list. So that said, I'm going to encourage you to attack this problem with I'm, if I'm not getting the right margin, if I'm not getting enough pricing, I'm giving the wrong message to the wrong person. That said, uh, let's talk about how to make it better. What's, uh, what's going on and how can I coach you today? So uh, I would I, – I, well, first of all, this is, this is quite uh, – Thank you for this, and it is it's great thing for me. I did <laughs> wow, you are really great, sir. Um, I can I can I can just uh, I can just I would like to uh, instead of, of um, uh, flyers, uh, the people just reading the flyers here because they have a lot of colors on them and a, a lot of things. I would like to um, write a very nice uh, letter. And in the, that letter will be personalized, and I will be saying what I am doing, how I am doing that, and uh, actually what are people getting uh, for 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 their money. So um, for every client where I'm cleaning, I'm making all the time photos, and then uh, I'm making an email. So I calling that uh, remarketing. Uh, it means I was in your house, I did do the cleaning, and these things i have done it today and they get it all in an email so that's that's the first thing the second thing i'm using a, a um, insurance uh, we are having a lot of trouble here with the people who are not part of the business uh who just uh, cannot learn a language or cannot find any kind of uh, of jobs so they are working uh, like a cleaners but uh, uh, they are not paying taxes they are not paying in- insurance uh, actually it's you have a low obligation here to pay all of these things you need to pay a health insurance you need to pay everything and these people are working for any kind of money so uh, I, I, I need I really need to be a different than uh, this in loyal competition are 
um, most of these people are working for a couple of months and then they learn a language and very easy to find a, another job. There is a, a, a currently a, a million empty um, uh, working places. So actually the Germany are searching for workers. Uh, let but, me let me jump in because we're going to run out of time and I want to make sure I give you feedback and you've... Uh, I'm sorry. No, it's yeah. fine. You just you, There's a lot of questions that I want to make sure I get to. But if you keep asking, I yeah. definitely won't be able to answer anymore. So let's start with the first thing that you said about sending letters versus door hangers. I want to encourage you, there is no right answer. So it's not like, well, door hangers are bad or letters are good or vice versa. It is what do your customers respond to? So I would definitely test both, right? So don't just try direct mail, which is a great method or, or, or mailing through an envelope uh, and and not try door hangers. I like both. Second, um, I would do fewer number more often. So say you've got 3,000 people that you want to mail to. I would encourage you to yeah. find the best thousand of those of those 3,000, maybe the closest or the highest uh, value homes or the highest net worth or the you know pick the cream of the crop based on their demographic and mail to them three times as opposed to mailing, mail to that 1,000 people three times as opposed to mailing 3,000 people one time. Does that make sense? Yeah. And if you really happens. wanted to kick up a notch, do both. Do the mailing and the door hanging. Because what happens is even in Germany, there's a lot of noise in terms of information coming in. People wanting our time, our attention. Advertisers, uh, TV shows, movies, people. There's just there's a lot going on. So often we, we, we just don't get stuff and, and that repetition will serve you. So first and foremost on the direct mail versus uh, – Door hangers, try both and test it. I don't care what you like. I don't care what I like. It's what your customers respond to that we're going to do. Second, do fewer people with more touches, right? So have an email and a door hanger and a, a, a direct mail piece and have maybe two or three direct mail pieces and an email sequence of four or five emails and maybe a door hanger every couple of weeks. Um, just do fewer people where you have more touches, right? Spend $10 or 10 hours or whatever units you want to measure on 100 people as opposed to one hour on a uh, thousand people. So that's the first thing. Second thing is you said you want to tell people what you do and how you do it and why it's good and all that. People could not care less about that. They only care about themselves. Um, so let's not, and I, I forget who I'm stealing this from, which frustrates me because I want to give credit, but I forget who said it, but I love it. It's people do not care. They don't buy when they know what you do. They buy when they know that you understand them. And so many marketers get that wrong. They want to constantly explain. We do this. We do that. We're green cleaners. Here's how we vet our people. We pay better. We, 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 we. They're not interested in you. They're interested in them. What they want to hear is you deserve a cleaner that has insurance. You need insured cleaners or people that pay taxes or you know whatever that case may be because this, that, and the other. So you're explaining to them their pain and that you understand what it is they're looking for. When I'm looking to work with a coaching client, I don't go, listen to me, I'm smart and I've got hundreds of thousands of downloads and listens and this and I've done that. People couldn't care less about that. I talk about them and their business and what's important to them and why it's important to them and how are we going to get them there. And magically, they know and trust that I can help them. But if I talked about me, they're going to be like, I don't even care. This, all this guy talked about was him and that's my least favorite subject. He didn't talk at all about my most favorite subject, which is me. They want to talk about themselves. So that would be the, the first thing is... <laughs> Smaller people, more touches, split test or test doing both. Don't just say, I'm going to just do direct mail. Find out what your customers respond to. Second thing is uh, talk about them and their needs. They will buy from you when they understand that you understand them, not when they understand what you do. They don't care what you do. Uh, was there a third question or did I hit everything? You did hit everything. I just want to share something with you. And uh, you, you, just, uh, you, just op you did open something for me. Uh, just a couple of days ago, uh, I was asking one um, a lady uh, why you are taking my company, why you need me. And she said to me, uh, you are a headache pill for me. I said, what? And she said, you know, uh, when I am having a headache, I just take a pill and I don't have any more headache. And uh, when I'm uh, having a headache about the cleaning, I just take you. And uh, you just have opened me uh, uh, a range, sir, you are quite talented, I can say. Uh, you, you did open me as some, I, I can, yeah, definitely I need, I need to change my approach uh, to, to the marketing. Yeah, it's definitely not about me, it's, it's about them. Yes, yeah. yes, and yes. I'm, I'm, maybe, I will, maybe I will change my, my company name in a headache pillow. <laughs> so Literally. what I'm doing for them, I, I'm 
definitely using it. Okay. <laughs> That's exactly what I was going to say. I wanted to tell you the best marketing lines I get or my customers that I coach get are word for word what their customers say. I was absolutely, I mean, you, you were saying it somewhat jokingly, but I am dead serious. That is perfect. Whatever the name of your company is could absolutely be your cleaning headache pill. That's fantastic. I love it. And, and don't change it at all. If that's exactly what she said, say it. Exa and again, especially if she's one of your better customers, right? If she's a low paying customer that complains all the time and you don't like her, let's not maybe take her advice. But if she's one of your better customers that pays well and appreciates what you do, and it sounds like she does because she said it better than I could have ever. I've been doing this for years and I've not thought of what is such a clever way to say it. So I would absolutely incorporate those exact words into your marketing at the most at the most extreme change your name to your cleaning headache pill right my the name of my company is yeah. grow your cleaning cup grow my cleaning company it's very clear what i do right there's no question so that would be the most extreme at the least extreme at least use it as your is your tagline right your company name and then your headache your cleaning headache pill is a tagline i would have that all over my marketing all right uh, i could go on it forever for you because you're fascinating to me but <laughs> we want to keep the time uh, somewhat reasonable so we're going to hit the lightning round and we're already over time so you got to go quick three quick questions three Three uh, genius answers from you. Question number one, what's the best piece of advice you've ever received personally or professionally? Uh, the best piece of advice is uh, quality over quantity. Couldn't agree more. Question two, what's the biggest mistake you've made in the cleaning business that we could all learn from? Um, I did uh, ask for less money than I'm, than I'm worth in order to get uh, new customers. All right. That's... I, that's a theme, but it's a theme for a reason because it's awesome. Um, last question. What's one idea Cleaning Nation can put into practice that will make their business or their lives better? Something easy to implement. Uh, uh, something very easy to implement. Um, I don't know. Uh, I, can, I cannot give uh, maybe uh, in United States. But what I, what, what I did, did see, and uh, uh, it is some uh, idea for marketing, uh, I, I, I believe that uh, Harry Potter is very popular in the United States. So uh, I did make a small brooms from Harry Potter. I did make it in my home with, uh, with very, very small effort. And I did give uh, these small brooms to the couple of the kids. And uh, I, I have a four or five customers. So maybe uh, sometimes... Uh, the commercial without internet is very, very interesting. Okay. I, I, I don't know. Did I hit did I hit the answer? No, it was okay. I like I like the creativity. That was awesome. All right. Nabosha, thank you so much for joining us. I know it's a whole different time out there and you had to go out of your schedule. I really love your passion and your desire to grow. I appreciate you. I guarantee you that Clean Nation appreciates you. Clean Nation, if you want to check out uh Nabosha's show notes page and get everything that you need to grow your cleaning company, all the tools, everything you need, growmycleaningcompany.com. Leave your questions, your comments, your rude remarks. I will see you there. Congratulations. You are now 16% smarter. Still can't get enough cleaning goodness? Go to www.growmycleaningcompany.com for more of the good stuff. Ever want to be rich and famous? Owners of cleaning companies as well as industry experts can apply to be featured on the show by emailing our producer Natalie at support at growmycleaningcompany.com. Until then, don't miss out on all the latest cleaning industry loving at www.growmycleaningcompany.com. Check it out now.